How you doing guys? Welcome to another episode of Plumbing's Cool. Today, we're gonna to be swaging copper pipe. Or more specifically, we're gonna be turning this into this so that you can do this. So what exactly is swaging? Well, effectively, what we're doing is we're taking a male end piece of pipe, otherwise known as a spigot, and we're enlarging it or stretching it out, kind of like when you blow up a balloon using a special tool called a swaging tool. And by blowing it up, we're actually effectively creating a hub or female end so that you can actually eliminate the need for a coupling. So other than not requiring a coupling, some other benefits that this allows is now when you need to solder or braze the joint, you only need to make one joint. So that's less likelihood of failure, less likelihood of leaking. And of course, it's the added benefit of that. Now that because you're making fewer joints, of course, fewer labor and less material equals more money in your pocket. So let's take a look at how we do that. There are different kinds of tools and methods for swaging copper pipe. You can buy drill bits that expand the pipe to a certain size. They have special expanders that allow the pipe to expand. But probably the simplest one, the one we're gonna demonstrate for you today, is a punch type stepped expander, expander that will actually do several different sizes. In this case, up to half inch in diameter. So a step type punch expander is probably the most cost effective way for you to swage copper pipe. It's like 10 bucks at the local uh, big box store or hardware store. And it's a nifty little tool for you to keep on hand just in case you run out of couplings. Now, other than an actual swaging tool, you're gonna need a couple of other things as well, but not much else. You're also gonna need a hammer. 16 ounces fine. And of course you're gonna need some copper piping. Now typically, the best copper piping for you to swage with is what we call soft annealed copper piping. This usually comes in a coil and is very soft and flexible. We can get away with swaging hard drawn copper piping, but you probably won't want to. Not with at least affecting the tempering of this first because it's very hard and rigid and it's gonna be quite a, quite a battle in order to um, stretch this out the, to the amount that you need to stretch it out. We'll get to that later on. Once you have that set up, I've got a pipe vise here behind me, but realistically, all you need is your hands and a hammer and your swaging tool, and that should be enough for you to swage a joint. So first, a little bit about pipe sizing as it applies to the plumbing field. So typically, plumbers refer to pipe sizing based on its inside diameter. So typically, half-inch copper pipe would measure about 5 eighths on the outside. So when you apply a swaging tool, and the swaging tool will tell you, at least on the packaging, the sizes that it accommodates, you'll need to likely accommodate for the outside diameter of the pipe. Because remember, you're turning a hub, or rather you're turning a plain end piece of pipe into a hub. That hub needs to accommodate the outside of the plain end pipe. So the size you're typically looking for, say for half inch, it will likely refer to it as 5 8 inch in size because that's the equivalent outside diameter of inside diameter half inch copper pipe. Same thing goes for three quarter. If you're swaging for three quarter inch inside diameter copper pipe, then the size of swaging tool you're looking for will be seven eighth. So another thing I'd like to point out is that if you are swaging copper pipe, you need to swage for the same size that you're connecting. In other words, you can't take say half inch copper pipe and swage it big enough to make it three to accommodate three quarter inch diameter pipe. It's actually against our code book to do that. And I don't know how it'd be physically possible, but just a word of warning. If you take half inch pipe, you swage it to accommodate half inch pipe. If you take three eighth pipe, you swage it to accommodate three eighth pipe and so on. You cannot swage it to allow it to accept a different size. Now, one other thing I'd like to bring up is with respect to reaming your pipe. When you typically cut copper pipe, you'll often see, not sure if you can see it too well in the camera, but you'll often see a little ream or edge from the cutting wheel. So what we often do is we take a reaming tool. This is a nice little $20 rigid reaming tool, which actually deburrs or takes the extra material out 
from the inside so we don't end up with turbulence inside the walls of the pipe so it ends up nice and smooth. Now, when in most cases, it's, it's, it's a good idea to always deburr or ream your pipe. I would argue that when you're creating a swage joint, it's not really necessary, at least not on the female side of things, because remember, you're creating a hub and that hub fits on the outside. There's no water touching it or passing through it. So if it makes you feel good or if it makes it easier for you to insert, if it makes it easier for you to insert the swaging tool, then sure. Ream it if you like, but it's not necessary to deburr your pipe in that case. Of course, the male end that goes into the hub, that's always going to have to get treated, deburred, cleaned before you insert it and close it all up with a brazier or solder joint. All right, so we're going to move the camera a little lower so you get a better view of the swaging process because more often than not, when we swage, we're swaging lower likely somewhere we're holding it somewhere near our legs so that goes to say if you're doing that and you're swinging a hammer make sure you don't miss because otherwise you might end up with bigger problems than a missing coupling so what we're going to do another thing to note is that notice how long the swaging tool is and the bigger the size the deeper you need to go with the swaging tool so if you have a bend in this pipe and your swaging tool is going quite deep into it you're going to end up hitting the walls of this pipe and damaging it or at least kinking it. So what you're going to want to do is before you swage, you want to make sure whatever depth that tool is going in, you want to get your pipe fairly straight. And this is soft pipe, but even though it's soft, it's not necessarily that easy to bend, especially the thicker it gets. So I'm going to take the swaging tool before I put it in all the way. I'm going to use it to straighten it out a little bit, just a little bit. You don't want to completely kink the pipe. So we're going to straighten it as much as possible. So we're going to be going, uh, looking for 5 8 inside diameter or outside diameter in this case. We're looking for 5 8 outside diameter. So we're going to go at least that deep. So you want to make sure that this is as straight as possible before we start hammering away at it. So we're going to insert it. Now, this is what I was talking about with respect to deburring. So because it's not deburred, you might have a bit of a hard time putting it in initially, but you've got to tap it a bit and there it goes. So if you want to deburr it, it might help get you to fit the, uh, the swaging tool in there, but it doesn't really matter that much. Remember, we're making a hub here. So you want to position yourself. Hold it nice and firmly between your legs and again, I can't say that enough times. Careful not to miss. Here we go. Now, odds are pretty good that as you hammer it, it's going to slip away from your hands because you're applying a lot of friction at once. So you're going to just want to keep backing up with your hand. As you get near the hub, just back up again. Keep an eye, make sure that it's straight enough so that the swaging tool doesn't end up catching the walls of the pipe at the lower end. And you can see that the swage is starting already. So we're gonna end up swaging just up until or just before the swaging tool bottoms out for that size. And almost there. As long as your depth is as deep as or deeper than what a normal pressure joint would be, you're pretty good. Now, if this is stuck in here, all you need to do is give it a little tap and it should come out. And there is your swage joint ready to meet. Let's take a look. Ready to meet its male companion. So we've swaged soft annealed copper piping. One of the big questions is, can you swage hard drawn copper pipe? Technically, yes, but unless you treat it a certain way, you're going to be having a bit of a tough time because hard annealed copper piping is just that. It's hard and it is tempered to be very rigid and difficult to bend. So what we're going to need to do is treat this with some excessive heat 
in order to soften it or effectively changing the temper of it so that we can swage. We can do this, I've swaged before without changing the temper, but it's not fun. And you also run the risk of ripping the pipe because it's not made to accommodate the stretching. So let's heat this up and see if we can end up swaging hard drawn copper pipe. All right. So what we have here is hard drawn copper pipe type L as indicated by the blue markings. This is half inch ID or inside diameter, outside diameter five eighth. So I'm going to fire up my torch and you're going to want to use, you're going to want to use either a really good propane torch, like this turbo torch that I have here, or you want to use acetylene because we're going to try and get this blazing red hot or close to it. Because once we do that, it's going to start to change the temper and we're going to allow it to cool on its own. Here we go. We're just going to run it. Nothing fancy here. We're just literally heating up the pipe. And really, you only need to heat up the end. You don't need to heat up the rest because this is the part that we're actually this is the part that we're actually swaging so when you see that it starts to discolor or get nice and red hot like we have here when you see it glowing I would argue and reason that's even enough. So we're not going to touch it and we're certainly certainly not going to touch it with our hands. What we're going to do is let this cool for a couple minutes. We're not going to put any, any water to it or quench it because that can change the tempering and some argue that can cause cracking. So we're going to let it cool on its own. So I'm going to take a short break, but I'll see you back in a split second. Okay, so we've allowed the pipe to cool. I'm going to put some gloves on nonetheless. Let's see if we actually change the temper of this. Now remember, when you're heating it up, you only want to heat up the portion that you're swaging so that the rest doesn't end up uh, getting too soft. So let's see if this worked. We put in our swaging tool, take our hammer, make sure not to miss. And we can see that it's already starting to open up. We're gonna do the other end. I'm just gonna show you before I continue with this. The end that's not heated up, you're going to notice that it's not going to go in so easily. Barely started to open it. Okay, so back to our tempered side, which makes me feel much more manly because it's a lot easier to do. So let's focus on this one. If I don't miss. And it's starting to come through. And I could probably have tempered a little bit more because now it's starting to get much harder to go into. So if you find that it's still not going in enough and you didn't temper enough, you can always fire up your torch and continue to temper it and then allow it to cool. Remember, as long as you get it at least as deep as what a regular pressure fitting would be, you're good. One eternity later. And that's not bad. In hindsight, I would have tempered this a little bit more, but that's actually pretty good for demonstration purposes. And it's going in about a half inch, which is typical for a regular fitting. And we may as well complete the process by giving you a little minor soldering intro or primer. I'm due to make a video on that as well. But for now, let's put together this swage fitting. So you're going to treat the hub just like a regular fitting. So you're going to, of course, you're going to clean the inside using a proper fitting brush and you're going to take 
the male end or the spigot and clean it. You're going to apply paste, solder paste on both sides, which helps to promote capillary action and it helps to decrease surface tension. So we've got both ends cleaned. We've got solder paste on both ends, fully inserted. And now we, be, we, we can begin to heat it up. So now when you solder, quick and dirty primer, you're gonna be soldering the intersection between the fitting and the hub. You don't, you don't heat up the pipe. You don't end up heating up anything outside. You end up heating up the intersection between the two. And you don't need to move, especially pipe this size, you do not need to move it very much because, especially because it's copper, copper is very good at transferring heat across its surface. So I'm going to lower this a little bit so you can hear me better. If you notice, I'm not even moving around my torch. I'm just keeping it there. Starts to see some smoke. And I'm just going to run my solder bead at the top. Don't keep your solder there because you don't want the flame to melt your solder. You want the, the joint to heat your solder. And then you want to apply only enough solder so that anything that begins to come out at the bottom, any drips, that's enough. Your, your joint is full. Okay, once you start to see a drip and, and a, a building up of solder at the bottom, no more solder is going to get into your joint and you're done. Anything excess is going to drip to the floor and you're going to end up wasting solder excessively, essentially. Now, of course, once this cools off, you can give it a wipe to make sure that your joint is nice and clean. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. And there is our properly soldered swaged joint and plain end pipe. And so that's how you swage copper pipe using an economical punch type swaging tool. I hope this video brought you some value and it added some skills to your repertoire. If it did, I'd appreciate it. if you do hit that like button. Please feel free to subscribe to this channel. And let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you're interested in seeing. I read every single comment and I reply to as many as I can. So I am listening. If there's something you want to see, we can make this channel work for you. Please do let me know. This channel is intended to help you out. Apprentices, do-it-yourselfers, handy persons, or just the inquisitive type. So let me know. I am listening and I thank you for watching and look forward to seeing you next time.